Hello. As promised in our previous stream, today is the 5th of November, which for us in the UK is bonfire night. So rather than a bonfire, I thought what might be interesting is to make a gunpowder barrel accessory item. So essentially this is a pet, because that's what pets are, they're accessories. So what we're going to do is make a barrel and then map a texture to it. So rather than starting with the accessory file, what we're going to do is just model this straight into the default scene. We don't need the cube, so we can get rid of that. Delete. We need to add an object. And we want mesh cylinder and then in the cylinder properties we want to reduce this down to let's go with 12 and we can leave the height that's fine generate UVs that's fine and let's do a bit of editing so scale change its height a little bit And edit mode. Want to add some edge loops or loop cuts. Where's, where's the um, Dagnabbit? They've changed the tool. Number of cuts. Oh, I see. Right, okay. So you have to place the loop cut tool and make a cut. Then the pop up appears with all the settings, and then you can adjust the settings, which. Bleh. I prefer mouse up uh, using the mouse scroll button. It's much more intuitive and you don't have to keep fiddling around with these um, property panels. But hey-ho. Uh, switch to scale, edge loop select. This is alt right click or alt left click, I guess, if you've got your left click, uh, left mouse button set up. That's one, that's two, and that's three and there is our barrel shape easy peasy so next we want to go into view front so we can adjust these a bit better there we go select all shove this up so the bottom is on the grid or on the uh, XY horizontal plane viewport where's the um oh perspective also there we go so that's a basic barrel just do a quick save of this, so exit edit mode, save. Uh, 
and we want to put a bit more detail in this so we want to put the bands in so back into edit mode and for this we can switch to face select alt right click a loop so what we're doing there is selecting the edge which will wrap around well it's not the uh, it, it's the edge that represents the horizontal as opposed to clicking a so if you click a vertical well if you click a horizontal edge and dagnab it can't do it with this so basically if you click the horizontal edge it'll select the vertical loop but if you click a vertical edge it'll select the horizontal loop very confusing select now what we want is mesh duplicate shift D and then we want to do an alt s or yeah so alt s or we can just left click drag let's try alt s alt s oh uh, that's what that sh should do then Uh, that's what that looks like that does right so move that up scale the top so alt right click the loop double tap G And then we can extrude inwards. Scale. Switch to wireframe. This is a bit messy because we don't want to add too many loop cuts and then try extruding because that's the other way to do it. So what you would do is uh, loop cut loop cut loop cut and then loop cut at the top and then extrude from this row of faces that you have but you end up producing a lot more polygons doing that and do that select extrude shrink so that's one barrel strap we can select that duplicate and flip this upside down mesh mirror uh, Z global yeah Z global that's another strap and then you could do it again if you wanted one in the middle but 
but two will do. Let's add a bit of detail to the top. Do an inset. And then an extrusion downwards. And we don't necessarily need detail on the bottom. It's just the top. And that'll do for a quick barrel. So save the file. Save. Oops. Exit edit mode first. Save the file. Save as. Number two. Let's add smooth shading to this. See what it looks like. Shade smooth. And now we need to fiddle around with sharp edges. So back into edit mode. Select the widget. The tools don't disable themselves unless okay, I'm on. Unless a widget is selected. You can't click the button to enable disable the tool. So you have to select a widget. So we're going to use mark seam now. So loop select, loop select, loop select. So that's alt right click or left click if you've got your left click set up for selection. And then you shift alt click to select additional loops. And then from the edge menu, mark sharp, they'll turn this pale blue. And then what we can do is, depending on whether we want, whoops, the edges to be faceted or not, we can then go around the mesh, shift alt clicking edge mark sharp but what we want to keep is the smoothing down the panel faces so we want these to be smooth but we want the edges between the panels to be sharp yeah So exit, Let's make this easy to see. So that's with smoothing assigned to the entire object. Modifiers, add modifier, edge split. And that'll split the barrel based on the marks, uh, not the marks, the uh, yeah, mark sharp that we've added to the mesh. So we do the same thing to the straps. Edge, select, shift, alt, select. Whoops. Alt, click. Whoops. Shift, shift, shift. Edge, mark sharp. Save the file, save as. So now what we need to do is assign a material. Click new, so that's uh, material properties or material context as it's now called. Material context, click the new button. Barrel. Oh, we have to do barrel square bracket zero close square bracket. So that's your IMVU compatible material or material name. 
So to actually use the material or set up the material, use nodes it's active, and then we're going to shading. So this is the preview at the top and our material properties down at the bottom, and they are now comprised of or composed from these nodes. And for this, we just need a simple one. So add texture, image texture, and click to drop that into the workspace and then open to load in a pre-prepared image or click new to generate one. So we've got one that's already pre-prepared, so open. And that is gunpowder barrel. So we can switch to icons to see this better. Where's it gone? I lost it. I just had the thing. Oh, there it is. Uh, Gunpowder barrel. So it's just a simple texture at the moment because open image. That's all we need. So to link this up so that it uh, is associated with the material, left click, drag color output, drop it onto base color input, and it's assigned to the object. And it's important to understand or know about blend using Blender 2.8, textures do not appear unless they are unless the, the object has been UV mapped. So if you drop an object or a primitive into Blender, it will be automatically UV mapped. So it will appear, but ordinarily this may not appear and the mesh will appear blank, white. Uh, so we need to adjust the UV maps. So click on UV editing, press the Z key. That gives us our rendering or display mode. We want look dev so that we can see the texture. And then all we need to do is map. So we can select the top, press the U key or UV and wrap. And then we can start. Or oh, where's the. Um, so let's use the transform widget. That gives us a little widget thing. Oh, and we want to UV snap to pixels corner. And when you're mapping your UV to your image, you want to leave a bit of overlap. Otherwise, what can happen is in IMVU, because of the way that IMVU works, you'll end up with um, bleed, texture bleed. So that's the top, that's the bottom. So UV unwrap. That's the bottom. Now for the barrel, we have to do something slightly different. We need to add a seam so that we can split the UV map, because if we don't, it'll go a bit wonky. So without a seam, if we unwrap this now, that's what we'll get. We'll get this. Uh, 
and that might work depending on how you want to work with the textures but you have to consider that if this is a derivable item you've got to make this easy for people to derive from so an easy way to map this would be to add a seam so we go into edge mode select an edge we'll do this on both of them let's switch to wireframe to make it easier so we've got our edges selected we're going to go into edge mark seam and they'll turn orange so if we now select those two and unwrap them they'll unwrap flat like this top one which is uh, the leftover from the object when it was originally added to the scene so UV unwrap so it'll do that and because it's a curved object it'll be curved so we now have to make some adjustments and straighten out the UV there isn't a shortcut for this unfortunately don't necessarily need to be too precise but we have to keep in mind that people deriving from this may want to drop some text on here So we have to keep that in mind to mitigate the amount of distortion that might occur as a result. So that'll do for that one. So what we're doing here is shift clicking the vertices or vertexes pressing the G key so that we activate the manipulation tool and then just moving them into position and left clicking to confirm and of course once you get used to blenders shortcut keys that can be relatively a relatively quick operation so in the 3d view we want to see the texture so press the Z key look dev grab strap number one that's the bottom 
not quite sure why that's grey. Oh, it's because it's selected. And the top one. So let's move that to the bottom, that to the top. Select them both and shrink them down. Make sure that we are more or less inside the space that we've allotted for the straps. And it doesn't matter that there's overlap because the way that the texture has been designed is that it tiles left to right. So there are our straps. Now we need to do a similar thing to the body. And this could be quite fiddly. Oh, did we add a... No, we didn't add a seam to this. So edges, alt right click. So we select an edge loop, which you can just about see. Edge, mark seam, and it'll turn orange. So now we should be able to unwrap that. So that's the original, which we could probably use. No, we can't, because we've added some mesh structure. So these are round, and the vertexes that are associated with that loop has collapsed. So we have to remap that. UV unwrap. So that is the map. Rotate and do the same thing again. Only this time we can use the widget. So we can do the same thing with this Alt right click on an edge and it selects the edge loop. So if you click on it, it's, it's easier to understand in this mode because we are editing UVs. So you click a, an edge, horizontal edge, and it selects the horizontal loop. Click a vertical edge, and it'll uh, select the vertical loop. And the widget tool functions by creating a bounding box around the selection and the corners scale. So they scale uniformly. The edges scale in the particular direction that the edge is uh, facing. And then this little um, node rotates and in the middle we have this little cross that you click drag and that will transform or move the loop. Right, so here comes the time-consuming bit.
And this is why snap to pixels is very useful to have enabled. So that's UV. Where is it going? Snap to pixels corner. Dumpty dum. Oh, I've just noticed the widget. So the widget only appears when you have a transform widget, which is the the 3D views equivalent of that is the the big one, which has uh, move, rotate and scale in the same single widget. And depending on how precise you want to be with your UV maps and your texture or your UV maps alignment to your texture, for objects like this, you may not necessarily need to or want to do this. But if, and I'll show this in a minute once we've done this, I'll use the shortcuts, it's a bit quicker. That's the G key. So you just select your vertex, press the G key and move it. can't really use snap to grid or snap to pixels or well aside from what we've got already set up because we need the alignment I mean blender will snap them to the grid or the pixels but the alignment may not be correct relative to the outcome that we're actually trying to achieve Almost, yeah, so almost there. Right, so let's save the file just in case. So file, save as, it's number four. So, depending on your texture, 
rectangle to let's make that a slightly darker orange. It's got one copy paste two three. That's about right. So we want this to. There's another one in there somewhere. There it is. Get rid of that. Take note. So we want this to. We want the UV map to match these divisions of our wooden barrel because each one of these is a wooden slat so let's just save this save export re-export yep so reload the image image reload and there are our slats so what we want to do with the UV map now is position it And edit each of these slats so that whoops they line up approximately with the width so where are we so we're on this side. All right, so that edge. So that's that edge. Right, so that's that mapped to our image. And as a derivable, you would have to provide this because uh, in this particular instance, we haven't got these exactly equidistant. So there is our switch back to layout so that's the UV map for the barrel so let's select the whole thing um, select all so what you might have to do is make sure that these are aligned left to right to accommodate any texture repeat so if someone were to put text on the ends or text appeared on the ends you would have to accommodate the fact that the text would be wrapped over the ends so we've got top bottom which we can't see so that's the bottom 
the straps. So that's the top strap. That's the bottom strap. And then we've got the barrel itself. Layout. So that's our quick barrel. So next, what we want to do, let's rename this object properties. I'm going to call this barrel. Save the file. Five. So what we want to do next, as we save that, just double check, save. What we want to do next, to so turn this into an accessory item, is load in the accessory file. So female accessory, open. There is our accessory. We're going to append the barrel that we just created. So file, append, browse to it. What did we call it? Gunpowder. Gunpowder barrel five. Object. And there's the barrel. And a pen from library. So nothing appears to have been imported, but that's likely because, as is always the case, the scale IMVU uses is about 100 times larger than Blender's default. So the way to check that your object has been imported is to look at the outliner and we can see that our barrel is listed as an item there. So that means the barrel is in place. And what we can also do in the 3D view is view frame selected and that zooms right in on our barrel and we can see how tiny that is. So what we want to do is scale that so we can press the S key and scale up, which may take a bit of effort, or we can use the object properties and the scale options and just type a couple of values. So let's try 50. So that's a bit squashed. So that means Let's undo that, undo. So let's use the scale manipulation widget and left click inside the white loop, but not on any of the colored handles because those will scale in a particular direction or combination of directions. So clicking on the blue one will scale up. Clicking on the green square, transparent square, will scale on two axes. So we have a very thin, almost Mario Kart. But clicking and dragging in the tinted area, it'll scale on all three axes. So how big is this? So top right, we have our values. So we want this to be 100, snap to units, press the control key down, and there is our barrel. Save this, save as accessories. Where's it gone? Gunpowder five, now we want now six. Save. So what we can do with this is attach it to or associate it with the root node. That's female 03 moss root. But what we want to do for that is click the object, object data properties, vertex group, click, double click, and this is called attachment root. So that's created the group. We now need to assign it. So edit mode, 
make sure everything is selected, select all. And then in the vertex group, we've got these extra buttons that have appeared. Click the assign button and then double check with select and deselect. Excellent. Object mode. And now we need to assign this to this armature. So with the mesh selected, modifiers. Oh, that's edge split. Uh, add modifier. We want armature. And this needs to be at the top of the stack. So click the up arrow and that moves it up to the top. Click the, uh, what is he called? Eyedropper. Click the eyedropper and then just click on the armature that we want to use as the target object. And it'll appear as female of three, blah -de blah So to check this, click pose mode and this should Yes, and it does. There we go. It controls. Our barrel. Nice. Save. And then we can export this. So just make sure that's in object mode. Deselect everything. So view, select none. And then export. So file, export, FBX. Deselect selected objects for armatures, uh, not armatures, for accessories. Deselect that. Geometries, leave out apply modifiers. That's OK. Armatures, disable always. Add leaf burns. We can we can leave animations. We're not using those. And then uh, check the file name. That's okay. Check location. That's okay. And then export. So IMVU, which we haven't got open. Right, so create mode, derive new product, and this is an accessory item, so female or male accessory, go, that gives us the default here, sun shades, and then to import FBX import, load FBX, find the file that we created, gunpowder 7. We get the select skeleton root box, and we want the one that always starts root node. Two bones, one mesh. And there is our barrel mesh. Mesh ID always two for females. And then scale 0 0.01 and then check the material that's okay and then import uh, yep that's okay import changes and apply changes and there is our barrel so hopefully because normally we don't actually use female 03 master root so let's try this female 03 master root. See if that works. Yes, there we go. So we now have a barrel as an accessory item. So you can. Um, so that is essentially what a pet is. So you've got a pet barrel here. But you can wear this as an accessory item instead of that being a furniture item. And it's brought in, imported the texture that was associated with the object. Oh, and it's inverted it. So we need to correct something. 
So rather than using two-sided, which would fix this problem, the blue band at the bottom, disable that, just save this file, save as. Uh. So what we want to do to correct this and that's happened because when we duplicated this top, whoops, wrong one, select the barrel. When we duplicated this top band and then flipped it upside down, what that's done is actually inverted the faces so they're actually paint uh, painting they're actually pointing inwards and for now where is it it's in the materials yeah back face culling and then we can there we can see what's happened. The faces are pointing inward. So to correct this, let's go into solid mode. Select these faces. So we need to make sure that we've selected all of them. And then mesh, normals, flip. And that'll flip them inside out. We won't necessarily see anything, so I'll do this in look dev so that we can see what's going on. So we've got them selected, which is why they're highlighted. So mesh, normals, flip, and it inverts them. Object mode. So it's always a good idea to disable back face culling and where that's done differs depending on whether you are in solid mode, wireframe, look dev or full rendered mode. Uh, there's a tutorial on that on catsbits forward slash codex. Uh, so save this, save over, that's okay. And then re-export this, so deselect everything and then re-export compiler 7, check settings that's okay, that's okay, that's okay and then export is that done? we need to re-import this so fbx import load fbx find the barrel gunpowder root node configure and then again to 1.0.01 import it's okay and then apply changes and there is the fix and because this isn't specific to an avatar we can also add 191 so that this can be used with male avatars and then save yep and there is your barrel accessory so you can wear that as an accessory in the same way that you would with a necklace, rings or just about anything else And what's missing, actually, so I was just about to say you can upload this to the catalogue, but before you do that, you're going to need texture map or UV map. Select your object, UV editing. We can actually do this in the original file, but this is fine. 
select all so that will give us the entire map you can select everything and then UV export UV layout then we'll get uh, some settings and properties that we can change so barrel change the name if you need to change the size if you want to make it larger or smaller uh, fill opacity this will give us a wireframe if set to zero or the UV will be a solid block and then just export let's just call this UV to make it easier to and then export export UV layout so what that's done it's created where is it Where is it? There it is. So that's created a UV map that can be used in conjunction with your actual texture because you'll probably provide this as a sample or an example as a template. The UV is useful just for the sake of uh, precision. So if someone wanted to do something specific to each of the each of the um, slats having the UV map helps with that so you drop those on your product page and they are available for derivation so there we have it a gunpowder barrel for November the 5th. So your objects don't necessarily need to be complicated. That was just a simple cylinder with a few bits of extrusion and loop cuts. So extrusion and loop cut and some basic shape manipulation. And that produces a simple object. Right, well, so there we have it. A barrel for Guy, Guy Fawkes night. Not Guy Fawkes, that was yesterday. Got a bonfire night. Right, so what we'll do there is call it quits. That was about an hour, so an hourish tutorial of sorts. And uh, we shall see you on the next one. Not sure what the next one will be about. But it'll be something simple and quick like this. That anyone can do basically. Using the starter file for Blender 2.8. Which you can get from catsbits.com forward slash codex. I'll drop that in chat. Uh. And that'll take you to the page where you can download the starter files for Blender 2.8, as well as seeing all sorts of other Blender 2.8 tutorials for IMVU. Right, so 
we'll call it quits there and uh, cheerio as they say in Botswana.